Electricity is getting more expensive by the month. And this is why I'm going to show you today how to undervolt your CPU and make it sip less power. Obviously, you could do this with any CPU possible. You do, don't need a CPU with an uh, unlocked multiplier. You can do that with basically anything that lets you choose the voltage, which is in most cases almost any desktop PC and any motherboard. I'm going to specifically focus on the AMD Ryzen 4 and 5000 CPU series, although that can be taken for the first, second and third gen as well. 7000 series might be some diff something different and Intel might also be different and I'm going to show you this in the specifics in different videos obviously. So this is only going to be for Ryzen 1000 through 5000. What can you expect from undervolting? Well, there might be anything between a 10 to a 30 or even 40% savings of power, depending on how far you will go and how you set it up. There's also two methods to do it, uh, which is uh, one method will save you more power under load and one method will save you more power or will save you power in idle as well. But I'm going to show you both of these now. So how to actually undervolt a Zen 2 CPUs or rather, first of all, what do you need? I would suggest that you first use a program that shows you any details about the CPU. So clock speeds, power consumption, voltage, and um, yeah, that's basically it because uh, we need to monitor those things for undervolting. Also, we need some kind of benchmark or load testing tool. I would suggest Cinebench R20 because that is also using AVX. So is, it is loading the CPU quite heavily and it is not such a high load that it would be unrealistic, such as Prime95, for example but it is a load that can happen in real time as well. So it's a good example of testing the stability of that undervolt you are trying to achieve. First of all, we are going to look at what the CPU can do at stock speeds and what frequency it's running at. On this 4500, we are seeing somewhere between 4050 megahertz and 3950 megahertz, depending on how long the test has been running or rather how hot the CPU is getting. And this is with the stock power limits. And then we're just because I'm curious what it will do without power limits. That's also a thing you can do if you want to get out the maximum of the performance out of your CPU. I removed any power limits that were set in the BIOS, um, although on this CPU it only managed a 3 watt gain. So the CPU was not really restricted by those power limits. For example, a 5800X or 5900X or even 5950X for that matter will be restricted much more heavily by those power limits and removing them completely may lead to uh, thermal throttling or something which can be remedied by undervolting quite good. So that's a really good option to get more performance out of your CPU, especially if you use a high-end CPU. And uh, yeah, as I said, with the power limits removed, my scores didn't change, but uh, yours probably will change if you're using a more expensive CPU. As we are running at 4 GHz, we are later going to choose a clock speed of 4 GHz for our manual undervolt. And now we are going to try to undervolt with keeping boost enabled. So we are going into the BIOS and we are just setting the voltage lower and trying to go lower from the core voltage within like 0.025 volt steps. Um, we have reached 0.1 volt undervolting. And if we look in Cinebench at the clock speeds, the weird thing is that on this CPU, I don't know if mine CPU has some kind of something wrong with it, because even though we just reduced the voltage, the CPU clock speed also dropped like 50 megahertz, which is not too drastic, but that's something to keep in mind. And if you 
need, want to, if the same happens to you and you want to up that clock speed again, you might have to adjust some parameters in the precision boost overdrive menu of the CPU. At 100 millivolts, for example, we achieved a power consumption that was about 10 watts less than without the power limits. So this is about a, I'd say 15% improvement, which is not bad. You gotta watch out though, because if you are doing the undervolt with keeping the precision boost overdrive enabled, there might be some problems when you go too low. The system might not crash directly, but the CPU might down clock and it might not really show in the clock speeds. That's why I recommend HW info to check clock speeds because it shows you the clock speed of the CPU that is shown in CPU Z as well, but it also shows you kind of real time clock speeds, which if you undervolt the CPU too low, uh, kind of drop below the clock speeds of the CPU that's shown everywhere else and it actually reduces the scores in Cinebench and in other applications. So you just got to be careful here and do not undervolt your CPU too low and just look at the point where the scores start to drop and go back one step and then you will probably be at the limit. And now we are going to do the exciting thing and which I think is quite useful and will net us a bigger drop in power consumption under load. The only problem is that we will not save as much power at idle. In the precision boost overdrive under voting, we were looking at about 6.5 to 6.8 watt power consumption in idle and when under voting at 5.5 watts, so that was quite low, but we will not get as low with this method. For this, we are going to set our multiplier from the CPU to a fixed value. So in this case, we are choosing four gigahertz since that is the value the CPU is running on average under load if it's stock. So that's a good value to choose if you wanna um, undervolt your CPU. And then in the BIOS, we have a few other settings to change. We first of all have to change our load line calibration to the highest setting. Some people may say that's counterproductive because the CPU will run under a high voltage under load, but the difference between the idle voltage and the load voltage will be minimal or the load voltage will even go up a bit because on a stock system with or with the load line calibration at a lower level, the CPU voltage will drop from the idle voltage if you have set 1.2 volts at idle and if you load up the CPU this will for example drop to 1.15 and if we set this to a higher value the CPU voltage will not drop or may even rise therefore the idle voltage is the same or even a bit lower than the load voltage so because we are setting a manual clock speed, we do not have uh, many power saving features active. Um, we can use this to save some power at idle as well. And then we also only have to set the offset voltage for undervolting. I achieved a 0.05 volt negative offset because we are starting from a different voltage here. The base clock, which in this case should be 3.8 gigahertz and on this CPU is 1.2 volts. It may be different on your CPU. I would just set the CPU at the desired frequency and then look at the um, voltage in, in under load to determine what voltage the CPU is running at. As I said, we have 1.2 volts and we are setting the offset at minus 0.05. So we should be getting about 1.15 under load or at idle. In this case, with the load line calibration on extreme on this motherboard, the voltage we are setting in BIOS is the actual voltage the CPU is also running under load, but this can vary between motherboard vendor to motherboard vendor. And if you have a higher end motherboard, there are more options for the low line calibration where the voltage might even go up under load. So you might have to just try and go in steps 
lowering your voltage and you cannot copy my results even if you have a 4500 because every CPU is different, yours might undervolt better or even worse. So just try out what is stable and uh, yeah, that's basically it. And then we're going to go back in a Cinebench and uh, if we have a look now we are, as I said, running at 0, uh, 1.15 to 1.14 volts and we are only consuming about 48 watts or 47, 48 watts, which is about 20 watts less than before, which is quite a significant difference. The only issue we have here, as I alluded to before, is that our idle power consumption is a bit higher than on even the stock CPU. So we have about 8.7 watts compared to 6.5 to 6.8. So we are about two watts higher here. But as I said, while surfing or not so heavy tasks, the power consumption will probably be almost the same. Uh, especially because the CPU boost is raising the core voltage artificially high to like 1.4, 1.45 volts on a stock CPU. There might not be as much difference and uh, you might even save some power there. In total you are obviously not going to lose any performance in most cases. Although if you are locking the clock speed at a specific speed, obviously the CPU is not going to boost over that as it would with precision boost overdrive. So you might sacrifice some single core performance in favor to having some more multi-core performance. And no matter what you go for, you always kind of have a win-win situation because you have less power being consumed, you have less cooling being needed, your case is getting heated up less, so the internal case temperatures and therefore the GPU temperatures and temperatures of any other components will be lower and therefore the components will last longer. So you only have benefits pretty much instead of having some downsides as you have with overclocking for example. Yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about undervolting. Do you have any other tips maybe you would share with our community? And um, if so, yeah, just leave that in the comments. And uh, otherwise, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.